الحديث الخامس We're on the fifth hadith uh, The kitab Umdatul Ahkam Written by Abdul Ghani Abdul Wahid Al Maqdisi Rahimahullah He said An Abi Huraira Taradhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يبولن أحدكم في الماء الذي لا يجري ثم يغتسل منه ولمسلم لا يغتسل أحدكم في الماء الدائم وهو جنوب The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا يبولن أحدكم One of you should not urinate أحدكم One of you fil ma'i in a water alladhi that water la yajri does not move it's still water and after he urinates what did he do thumma yaghtasilu minhu and then he has a bath inside it from it he has a bath from it wali muslimin and the wording of imam muslim was la yaghtasil one of you should not have a bath ahadukum fil ma'i da'im water which is still wa huwa junubun Whilst he's in a state of janaba. This hadith, Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he narrated it in his sahih. Kitab al-Wudu, babu al-bawlu fil ma'i da'im. So Imam al-Bukhari narrated this hadith in Kitab al-Wudu. Also, al-Imam al-Muslim narrated this hadith in Kitab al-Tahara, two different narrations. Within Kitab al-Tahara, two different riwayat. The first one, um, he, uh, it was chaptered under the heading of Babu Nahi Anil Bawli Fil Ma'i Rakid, and the other one is Babu Nahi Anil Ikhtisali Fil Ma'i Rakid. The Sahabi who narrated the hadith, his tarjama, his biography, Abu Huraira, we've taken, so we're not going to go over it again. We took it when we were on the second hadith. What does this hadith deal with? This hadith deals with Hukmul Bawl. The ruling of urine fil ma'ir rakid in the still water wal ightisalu fihi and to have bath inside it min al janabati from major impurity. From major impurity. The wording of the hadith the Prophet said, La ya bulana. This is a prohibition. This la is kulla unahiya. Prohibition. And the intent behind it is tahrimu, prohibiting. To urinate in a water which is still, that doesn't move. The had first part of the hadith explains the second part of the hadith. The first riwayah, it says, لا يبولن أحدكم في الماء الذي لا يجري في الماء الذي لا يجري The water that does not, that does not move. The other riwayah, which is the wording of a Muslim, is لا يغتسل أحدكم في الماء الدائمي Daim, the interpretation is in the other hadith. What does it mean? Ay alladhi la yajri. Daim, the definition of it is alladhi la yajri. It's the thing that doesn't move. Daim means still, still water. We will come to the fiqh regarding uh, that. Thumma, after he urinates in the water, ha, yaghtasil minhu. He urinates, he takes a bath from it. The Prophet prohibited that, alayhi salatu salam. وهو جنوب whilst he's in a state of جنابة which is a um, جنابة is ما ما يجب فيه الغص anything that having a bath you have to come with anything that will necessitate you to have a bath such as what من جماع a sexual intercourse أو إنزال مني أو your your money coming out from you money is huh uh, semen. This now is whether it's through sexual intercourse and it coming out. You might wonder and say to yourself, what's the difference between sexual intercourse and water urine coming out? Uh, sorry, semen coming out. La. The sexual intercourse in Zalul Mali is not a condition if the two genita meet. The, the Prophet ﷺ said, khitanani, if the two genitals meet one another, wajabal the having of the bath. So a man and his wife meet, huh? and then somehow, one, one way or another reason, whatever the case is, they have to stop. They'll say, Wajab al-Wusl. 
Even if nothing went in, wajab al ghusl. The ghusl, which is the bath, is wajib. Are you with me? It's wajib, wajab al ghusl. This hadith also shows us another thing, which is idha al-taqa al-khitanani, wajab al ghusl. If the two circumcised, that's what the hadith says. It says idha al-taqa al-khitanani. This is to show you that the women have to be circumcised and it's mandatory on them as much as it's mandatory upon the men. La farqa baynahuma. Whatever narration that is used to make it obligatory on the male is also what was, is made obligatory for the women. La farqa baynahuma. And this hadith is one of the hadith that indicate that the women have to be circumcised. Like in there are now circumcisions which are wahshi. Huh? which basically is incorrect and it's got no basis in Islam with which is when the woman is mutilated. The mutilation is not from our religion, has no basis in our religion. The mutilation has no base and no place in our religion for the women's genital to be mutilated. Circumcision is that the Prophet ﷺ has said to the women, he said cut the top layer of it. This, whatever comes out from the two sides of the meat, whatever comes out, that's slightly just cut that off. But, but countries back home, they cut her, they sew her, like a sewing machine. They sew her, and they only leave a little part in which she can urinate from, or where her uh, blood comes out from. And that is not from our religion. So, the hadith tells us, whilst the person is in a state of janaba, whilst the person is in a state of janaba, do not have a bath from that water. The fiqh in the hadith. The fiqh of the hadith. The first point is, النَّهْيُ عَنِ الْبَوْلِ فِي الْمَاءِ الدَّائِمِ the, the first fiqh that we get from this hadith is the prohibition of uh, uh, to urinate in water which is still, uh, that doesn't move. That doesn't move. Number two, which is the prohibition of urinating. The reasoning of why it's prohibited is the second one, is لِأَلَّا so the person does not make the water impure. وَعَنِ الْغُسْلِ And also the prohibition of having a bath in a, or cleaning yourself from a water in which if you urinate in, you're going to have to have a bath from it later. The people in the city, this is the only water they use. This is the only water you use. And you're now urinating in it. Hey, what are you going to use later to have a bath from? So don't do it. Because what's going to happen is that the people are going to, the people are going to, um, so the two things that are prohibited in the hadith is don't go into the water and dip in whilst you're in a state of janaba. Because the people, the people are not going to have a drink or, and eat or drink and use a water in which somebody who had state of janaba went in. Are you with me? And uh, the and urinate inside their water. So what does the sharia want you to do? Go to the side of the water and take your bucket and use it like that from outside. So take it and go out there far and you clean yourself with it like that. As it's in the Sahih al riwayah of Abu Hurairah in Sahih al-Muslim. Because the hadith in Sahih al-Muslim is different from the wording in Sahih al-Bukhari. Al-Muslim. The Muslim's wording by itself, it says, لا يغتسل أحدكم في الماء. He should not have a bath inside the water. The word fi is used. The word fi is in. So what's prohibited is for you to have the, a bath inside the water. Whilst in a state of janaba. So what are you allowed? The fiqh is that the word fi says in. So what are you allowed? You're allowed to do minhu. Ah. From it. You're not allowed to have in it, but you're allowed to have uh, janaba, ghusl from it. So you take a bucket and you do your cleaning outside. So that's the point you have to ponder on. Number three. The water that moves has a different rolling to the still water. If the water is moving and it's not still, then it's not the same ruling as the water that stands. Where did they get that from? Mafhum al mukhalafa The opposite understanding. Because the hadith prohibited mantuqan. By way of utterance, it prohibited. What did it prohibit? It prohibited the water that stands. So what does that mean? If the water is moving, then you can urinate inside it if you want to. Or you can also have a janaba from it. You're allowed to. And the reason is because if the water is moving, when the janaba, when the person urinates in it, the next one that's going to come is going to clean it. So water is going to move. By the time the people want to drink from it, your urine is gone somewhere far. It's gone. Does that make sense? It goes far. Number four. <coughs> this hadith 
Mahmolun, it is interpreted and understood to mean al 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 qalil water which is little. In the Ahlil Ilmi, according to the scholars of knowledge, the people of knowledge, the scholars, they consider that uh, the, this hadith is referring to water which its amount is very little. Which, uh, the reason why um, the scholars, they say that is because um, the hadith which is going to come to us, which is the hadith of Qullatayn. The way the Prophet said, إِذَا بَلَغَ الْمَاءُ قُلَّتَيْنِ لَمْ يَحْمُلْ الْقَبْضِ If the water reaches Qullatayn, huh? if the reach, uh, it's a gallon, if a water reaches a gallon, it does not take impurity. That's what they said. The hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If the water reaches a gallon, لا لا لم يحمل الخبث. It doesn't. Um, That, that's the fiqh of the hadith. The ulama have disputed one another. The ulama have disputed one another. And that's the last point, which is the prohibition in this hadith. Is it nahyu lit tahreem or nahyu lil karaha? Because the prohibition, those two types, is what, they come, what it comes in. Is the prohibition here because it's haram? Or is the prohibition here is because it's disliked? Which of the two is it? There is three views regarding this madahib, three views. The Malikiya scholars they believe Anahu lil karaha, that is disliked. The Hanabila and the Zahiriya believe Anahu lil tahrim, it is prohibition. The third view is the third which was, they took the view is Anahu muharramun, it is haram. Fil qalil when the water is little. Makruhun is disliked. Fil kathiri when the water is a lot. The water is a lot. It's disliked. Why are you going to urinate even if it's a lot? But it's haram when it's little. And that third view seems the strongest. That third view, which is the, the view of the Shafi'iyah, seems the strongest. The, la, the other dispute that, that occurred, which is the other, is the water that is urinated in. The water that is urinary, urinated. Does it remain upon its purity or does it become impure? If a person goes and urinates in a still water, do we say that this water is pure or do we say it's not pure? There's also um, three views regarding this as well. Are you with me? They said, if it changes, if it changes, if it changes they said, if it changes. The change occurs from how many places? Three places. The color. The smell and the look. Sorry, the color, which is what you see, the, uh, the smell and the taste. Those three. If it changes from any of those three, that water is what? It's impure. That is a consent. The first one is, That's a consent. Once it changes, there's no khilaf on this issue. The second one is that, What about if the water hasn't changed? And it's a lot. But it hasn't changed. The taste hasn't changed. The smell hasn't changed. Even the look hasn't changed. And the water is a large amount. The second view, the second madhab is أنه باقن, فالأصل أنه باقن على طهوريتي. This water remains upon its original essence. Nothing has removed it from its original essence. Third, which is إذا كان قليلا, If the water is little, غير متغير, ها? If it's little, if it's little, إن كان ق, إذا, إذا كان قليلا, if the water is little, غير متغير, but it hasn't changed. Nor has the color changed, nor has the smell changed, and nor has the taste changed. Uh, taste changed. Nothing has changed. And it's little. Uh, and uh, the strongest is that, فالصواب, they said, عدم تنجسي, that the water we won't consider to be impure. With those three views, they all, those three points, uh, is what brings the issue to uh, uh, an answer, which is, that the water, its impurity is in two things. The amount and the changing. The quantity of the water and how big and large the water is, or whether the water is changed or not. That's how it is. Are you with me? So if the water changes and it's a law, we're just going to say it's impure. It has to meet all the conditions. It has to be large in number, quantity, and it doesn't change. If it's little, and it hasn't changed, it's better that the person leaves it. 
But it doesn't matter. It still it still can be used. Now.